Joshua chapter 17 This was the land allotted to the tribe of Manasseh as Joseph's firstborn, that is, for Machir, Manasseh's firstborn. Machir was the ancestor of the Gileadites, who had received Gilead and Bashan because the Machirites were great soldiers. So this land was allotted to the rest of the people of Manasseh. The clans of Abaiza, Helek, Azriel, Shechem, Hepha, and Shemaida. These are the other male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph by their clans. Now Zelophehad, son of Hepha, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but only daughters, whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. They went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance amongst our relatives. So Joshua gave them an inheritance along with the brothers of their father, according to the Lord's command. Manasseh's share consisted of ten tracts of land, besides Gilead and Bashan east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manasseh received an inheritance among the sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh extended from Asha to Mikmathath, east of Shechem. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living at en Tapua. Manasseh had the land of Tapua, but Tapua itself on the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the Ephraimites. Then the boundary continued south to the Cana ravine. There were towns belonging to Ephraim lying among the towns of Manasseh, but the boundary of Manasseh was the northern side of the ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. On the south, the land belonged to Ephraim, on the north to Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached the Mediterranean Sea and bordered Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar and Asher, Manasseh also had Bethshan, Iblium, and the people of Dor, Endor, Teanach, and Megiddo, together with their surrounding settlements. The third in the list is Naphoth. Yet the Manassites were not able to occupy these towns, for the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you allotted us only one portion of land and one share for an inheritance? We are a numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear land for yourselves there in the land of the Perizzites and Rephaites. The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who live in the plain have chariots fitted with iron, both those in Bethshan and its settlements and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the tribes of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are numerous and very powerful. You will have not only one portion of land allotted to you, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it, and its farthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have chariots fitted with iron, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. Joshua chapter 18 The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh, and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Appoint three men from each tribe. I will send them out to make a survey of the land and to write a description of it according to the inheritance of each. Then they will return to me. You are to divide the land into seven parts. Judah is to remain in its territory on the south, and the tribes of Joseph in their territory on the north. After you have written descriptions of the seven parts of the land, bring them here to me, and I will cast lots for you in the presence of the Lord our God. The Levites, however, do not get a portion among you, because the priestly service of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad, Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan. 
Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it to them. As the men started on their way to map out the land, Joshua instructed them, Go and make a survey of the land and write a description of it. Then return to me and I will cast lots for you here at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord. So the men left and went through the land. They wrote its description on a scroll, town by town, in seven parts, and returned to Joshua in the camp at Shiloh. Joshua then cast lots for them in Shiloh in the presence of the Lord, and there he distributed the land to the Israelites according to their tribal divisions. The first lot came up for the tribe of Benjamin according to its clans. Their allotted territory lay between the tribes of Judah and Joseph. On the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan, past the northern slope of Jericho, and headed west into the hill country, coming out at the wilderness of Beth-Avon. From there it crossed to the south slope of Luz, that is Bethel, and went down to ataroth Adda, on the hill south of Lower beth -Horan. From the hill facing beth -Horan, on the south, the boundary turned south along the western side, and came out at Kuriath Baal, that is, Kuriath Jearim, a town of the people of Judah. This was the western side. The southern side began at the outskirts of Kuriath Jearim on the west, and the boundary came out at the spring of the waters of Nephtoa. The boundary went down to the foot of the hill facing the valley of Ben Hinnom, north of the valley of Rephaim. It continued down the Hinnom Valley along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, and so to Enrogel. It then curved north, went to En Shemesh, continued to Geliloth, which faces the pass of Adamim, and ran down to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. It continued to the northern slope of Beth Araba, and on down into the Araba. It then went to the northern slope of Beth Hogla, and came out at the northern bay of the Dead Sea, at the mouth of the Jordan in the south. This was the southern boundary. The Jordan formed the boundary on the eastern side. These were the boundaries that marked out the inheritance of the clans of Benjamin on all sides. The tribe of Benjamin, according to its clans, had the following cities. Jericho, beth Hogla, Emech Kizis, beth Araba, Zimaraim, Bethel, Avim, Para, Ophra, Kepha Ammonai, Ophni, and Jeba. Twelve towns and their villages. Gibeon, Ramah, Beeroth, Mizpah, Kephira, Muzah, Rechem, Erpiel, Tarala, Zila, Heileph, the Jebusite city that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, and Kiriath. Fourteen towns and their villages. This was the inheritance of Benjamin for its clans. Joshua chapter 19 the second lot came out for the tribe of Simeon according to its clans. Their inheritance lay within the territory of Judah. It included Beersheba, or Sheba, Maleda, Hazashuel, Bala, Itzem, Eltolad, Bethel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Makaboth, Hazasuza, Beth Lebeoth, and Sharurin, thirteen towns and their villages. Ain, Rimon, Ether and Ashon, four towns and their villages, and all the villages around these towns as far as Baalath Bia, Ramah in the Negev. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Simeonites according to its clans. The inheritance of the Simeonites was taken from the share of Judah because Judah's portion was more than they needed, so the Simeonites received their inheritance within the territory of Judah. The third lot came up for Zebulun, according to its clans. The boundary of their inheritance went as far as Sarid. Going west, it ran to Marala, touched Jabesheth, and extended to the ravine near Jokniam. It turned east from Sarid towards the sunrise to the territory of Kisloth Tabor, and went on to Dabara, and up to Japhiah. Then it continued eastward to Gathhepha and eth -Kazin. It came out at Rimon and turned towards Nia. There the boundary went round on the north to Hanathon and ended at the valley of Ittael. Included were Katath, Nahalal, Shimron, Idala, and Bethlehem. There were twelve towns and their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of Zebulun according to its clans. The fourth lot 
came out for Issachar, according to its clans. Their territory included Jezreel, Kesaloth, Shunem, Hapharaim, Shion, Anharap, Rabbeth, Kashion, Ebeth, Remeth, Enganim, Enhada, and Beth Pazes. The boundary touched Tabor, Shahazuma, and Beth Shemesh, and ended at the Jordan. There were sixteen towns in their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Issachar according to its clans. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of Asher according to its clans. Their territory included Helkath, Helai, Beton, Akshav, Alamalek, Ahmad, and Mishal. On the west, the boundary touched Carmel and Shihor Libnath. It then turned east towards Beth Dagon, touched Zebulun, and the valley of Ibthael, and went north to Beth Emek and Nahayel, passing Kabul on the left. It went to Abdon, Rehob, Hamon, and Kana, as far as Greater Sidon. The boundary then turned back towards Rama and went to the fortified city of Tyre, turned towards Husa, and came out of the Mediterranean Sea in the region of Akzib, Oma, Afek, and Rehob. There were twenty-two towns in their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Asher according to its clans. The sixth lot came out for Naphtali according to its clans. Their boundary went from Helef and the large tree at Zeananim, passing Adami Nikeb and Jabneel to Lakam, and ending at the Jordan. The boundary ran west through Asnoth Tabor and came out at Hakok. It touched Zebulun on the south, Asher on the west, and the Jordan on the east. The fortified cities were Zidim, Zer, Hamath, Rakath, Kinareth, Adama, Rema, Hazor, Kidesh, Edrei, En Hazor, Iron, Migdal El, Horem, Beth Anath, and Beth Shemesh. There were nineteen towns in their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Naphtali, according to its clans. The seventh lot came out for the tribe of Dan, according to its clans. The territory of their inheritance included Zora, Eshteol, Ur Shemesh, Shealabin, Ajalon, Ithla, Elon, Timna, Ikron, Iltike, Gibbethon, Baalath, Jehud, Benegvirach, Gathrimon, Mijakon, and Rakon, with the area facing Joppa. When the territory of the Danites was lost to them, they went up and attacked Lishem, took it, put it to the sword, and occupied it. They settled in Lishem and named it Dan after their ancestor. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Dan according to its clans. When they had finished dividing the land into its allotted portions, the Israelites gave Joshua, son of Nun, an inheritance among them, as the Lord had commanded. They gave him the town he asked for, Timnath Sirah, in the hill country of Ephraim, and he built up the town and settled there. These are the territories that Eleazar the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel assigned by Lot at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And so they finished dividing the land. Psalm 81 Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Begin the music, strike the tambourine, play the melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn of the new moon, and when the moon is full on the day of our feast, this is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. When God went out against Egypt, he established it as a statute for Joseph. I heard an unknown voice say, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress you called, and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear me, my people, and I will warn you. If you would only listen to me, Israel. 
You shall have no foreign god among you. You shall not worship any god other than me. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Proverbs chapter 19 Better the poor whose way of life is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Wealth attracts many friends but even the closest friend of the poor person deserts them. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. The poor are shunned by all their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Though the poor pursue them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will perish. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on deep sleep, and the shiftless go hungry. Whoever keeps commandments keeps their life, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Rescue them, and you will have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept discipline and at the end you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a person desires is unfailing love, better to be poor than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, then one rests content, untouched by trouble. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish, he will not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a mocker, and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning, and they will gain knowledge. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers and beatings for the backs of fools.